Legend says that the first pearl was discovered by the Hindu god Krishna, who plucked it from the sea and presented it to his daughter Pandaya on her wedding day. 4200 BC, Egypt. Decorative mother of pearl is used in clothing and jewelry. Pearls are revered so much that they are often buried with the dead. 23rd century BC, China. Pearls are said to originate in the brain of a dragon. Early Chinese recordings speak of pearls gifted to royalty. 400 BC. Greeks use pearls at weddings where they are said to bring love and are synonymous with romance. 30 BC. Cleopatra wagers Mark Anthony that she can eat the world's most expensive meal, one worth the entire wealth of nations. She dissolves one of her pearl earrings in vinegar and drinks it. The large pearl is valued at the time to an equivalent of almost $10 million today. 40 AD, Rome. Only persons of a certain rank are allowed to wear pearls. Emperor Caligula decorates his favorite horse with a pearl necklace. General Vitilius pays for an entire military campaign by selling just one of his mother's pearl earrings. 1500s, European Renaissance. It is illegal to own pearls for anyone not of nobility. It is also against the law to fabricate fake pearls. Those who break these laws lose a hand. In 1906, English marine biologist William Savell Kent discovers the secret to round pearl cultivation in Australia, but quickly becomes a footnote in pearl history when two gentlemen by the name of Mies and Nishikawa bring the technology to Japan and patent it as their own. They too find themselves to be footnotes, as entrepreneur and pearl farmer Mikimoto finds a technicality in the patent process which allows him to adopt the Mies Nishikawa method. He is largely accredited as the father of cultured pearl industry today. His contributions include adding round nuclei cut from U.S. mussel shells, which has served as the basis for virtually all cultured saltwater pearls in the last 100 years. Pearls become accessible to people of all stations around the world. At the same time, jeweler Pierre Cartier buys his company's Fifth Avenue headquarters in New York with $100 in cash and a two-strand pearl necklace valued at $1 million. Forty years later, because of the success of the cultured pearl industry, that same million-dollar necklace is auctioned off for $157,000. Love is not about having a good time all the time. Can you truly love someone through the difficult time in your life? A pearl was not intended to be created. It was an irritation, it was a pain, an oyster, trying to cover its wound. I decided to drill the pearl, insert the diamond in the center, the center then represent uh, the pain and the pearl represent the aura of love that I have created and I made it for my wife. In the pearl industry, it's a taboo for you to actually touch a pearl. A pearl is supposed to be perfect. You can't just go and carve it. You ruin the values of things. But I'm the kind of guy who have no understanding what value means to me, except, you know, you create something, you you, and as an artist, you, you, you create meanings out of something and you share the feeling that you create that we have a value. I say I want to put the gemstones inside the pearl and trying to let a, an oyster grow around it and, and then carve it to see light and color exposed from the inside of a pearl. And, and nobody figured out in the past to be able to accomplish that. Uh, and it wasn't easy. It took me about five years to make it work. But I make it happen and that's a game I brought into this world. Galatea's monopole magnet bead cores are engineered so only the north ends come in contact with one another, providing a natural space as the ends pull away from each other. more people would display the pearl, I break them. I break 16 millimeter pearl, which is very expensive, and then I reconstruct them into a flower, and I inlay gold within it, you know. So basically, I, I, I destroy the whole thing. Uh, the way that we sh think about pearl in the past, giving it new value and new vision to what you possibly can do to a pearl.
this watch belonged to my father. Uh, he gave it to me when he died in 1994. Every time I see this, it's, uh, it's remind me of him. His image just flashed up into my head. And that, to me, is very personal. You know, it's a, definitely it's a personal object. I imagine Peter Churi that be able to listen to my father's voices and see his image. That would be amazing. And that's why today I create the Memento Pearl. This Memento Pearl allows you to record voices, images from your loved one. My love, should anything ever happen to me, know that I am here within this pearl, close to your heart forever. Love, Sean. process that is honest to me. Every piece of jewelry that I make, first, it must enter the eye. Second, it must enter the mind. And third, it must touch the heart. If a piece of jewelry or a design that I make missing one of the percentages, then I have missed the point that arouse our human emotion or the way we behave. Living without a dream is worthless living. Dreaming it without living it is worthless a dream. But when dream ends, living begins.